What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to share with you three envelopes recently returned and give you the profiles of each of the players that signed for me. So we're going to jump right into this. And the first one is postmarked from Arizona. And it is former Detroit Tiger, Chicago White Sox, St. Louis Cardinal, Laren Legro on one. A second, 71 tops rookie, two. A third is a Chicago White Sox. And a fourth is a Detroit Tiger. So let me tell you about Laren Legro and his career in Major League Baseball. Legro was born in Phoenix, Arizona, where he attended Glendale High School and then Arizona State University in 1968 and 69 before beginning his professional baseball career as a free agent with the Detroit Tigers. He played in the minor league and was the Southern League's Player of the Year in 1970 when the Tigers called him up to the majors in July of 1970. We appeared in 10 relief appearances that year for the Tigers. After spending the entire 1971 season back in the minors, Legro rejoined the Tigers in 72 and 73, appearing in 37 and 34 games, those years respectively, out of the bullpen. In 1974, Legro became part of the Tigers' starting rotation and in 1975, where he started 34 games in 74 and 26 in 1975. In April of 1976, the Tigers sold Legro to the St. Louis Cardinals, where he pitched in eight games for the Cardinals during the 76 season, posting a 1.48 ERA in relief appearances for the Cardinals that year. During the 77 and 78 season, Legro would move to the Chicago White Sox, which is that card right there, where he appeared in a career-high 66 games in 1977 and in 52 in 1978. In 1977, he had 25 saves for the White Sox that year, being their closer, which finished him third best in the American League. The following year in 78, he had 16 saves that season. He finished his career with stints for the Dodgers and Phillies in 10 seasons. Legro went 34 wins and 55 losses in 309 games, 67 as a starter, as well as completing 19 games. He had 54 saves, over 779 innings pitched over his 10-year career. So very happy to add Mr. Legro to the collection. I'm not sure if Gene Lamont signs to the mail, so if anybody is watching this, has had a success with Gene Lamont, definitely let me know. Uh, a neat little trivia fact about Gene Lamont is his son actually works for the Texas Rangers organization, and uh, I've met him a couple times, and I, you know, due to COVID, I actually was thinking about asking him, hey, you know, does your dad sign? But with COVID protocols and all that, I never got a chance to do that. So happy to get these vintage cards back from Mr. Legro. All right, so this next one's postmarked from North Carolina. And it is former Washington Senator, lefty specialist, Barry Moore on one, two, three and a fourth so he signed a couple duplicates these are literally the extent of my Barry Moore collection I went through my cards and this is all that I had so let me tell you about Barry Moore and his career in baseball Barry Moore a North Carolina native was signed by the Washington Senators as an amateur free agent before the 1962 season he would work his way up through the Senators' ranks and made his appearance in 1965 with the Senators, where he would pitch in the major leagues for the Senators from 1965 to 1969. After his time with the Washington Senators, he would be shipped to the Cleveland Indians and split the season between the Indians and the Chicago White Sox. After his 1970 season, he would never pitch in the majors again, but he would be traded to the New York Yankees and also played a couple seasons for the Pittsburgh Pirates in their minor league affiliates, never breaking the majors again after 1970. You may ask, how did a pitcher, especially a lefty at 27 years old, play his last game in 1970? Well, the answer simply is this. Moore had an issue with his control. 
this is these are excerpts from his Wikipedia page. I am not, you know, making this up on the cuff, but uh, according to his Wikipedia page, Moore did have a tendency to be wild as he gave up 300 walks in 599.2 innings pitch for his career. So we'll just round up 599 to 600. So half of the time that he pitched. At minimum, he walked one person, <laughs> you know, half of the time, which is not really good for a, a lefty specialist. His base on balls per nine innings pitch was four and a half, which is much higher than the American League average at that time. His career totals in the majors was 143 games, and he had a win-loss record of 26 wins and 37 losses. And again, he had some effective wildness, I guess you would call it. Maybe it wasn't that effective, but another interesting fact that's on his Wikipedia page, even though he pitched just 141 innings in 1970, more tied for third among the American League pitchers with nine hits batsmen. By contrast, it took the other four pitchers who tied him on average 240 innings to hit the same numbers that he did. So, so as a reliever, it's usually pretty rare that you are that high on the hit, you know, beanball list, but more accomplished that. And that's why after 1970, I think he had a little trouble getting back to the major leagues, especially with the Yankees and the Pittsburgh Pirates, because at that time, the Yankees and Pirates were, you know, building their dynasties. I mean, the Pirates were a really good team at that time. So I'm very happy to add Mr. Moore to the collection, another Washington Senator. You just don't see very many of them still around. So very happy to get these back in the mail. All right, so you know, obviously if I'm doing a video with vintage cards, you know, I gotta have at least one Baltimore Oriole return in there. And this return is from John O'Donohue, Sr. And we'll tell you about Junior here in a second on a couple Seattle Pilots cards as well. And I've showed these Seattle Pilots cards off before on my channel. And also one as a Kansas City A. John Eugene O'Donohue, and I'm gonna point that out because his son is John O'Donohue Jr. And we'll talk about him in a second. Was born in St. Louis, Missouri, a left-handed pitcher that signed with the Kansas City A's as a free agent right before the 59 season. He worked his way up through the Kansas City A's organization and in 1963 pitched for the Kansas City A's through 1965 where he made an all-star appearance representing the Kansas City A's. After the 65 season, he would go to the Cleveland Indians for two years. He would spend one year with the Baltimore Orioles in 1968 and then he would be selected by the Seattle Pilots in the expansion draft where he would spend 1969 with the Pilots and move to Milwaukee in 1970 with the franchise as well. And then he would move on to the Montreal Expos. During a nine-year Major League career, O'Donohue compiled 39 wins, 377 strikeouts, and an ERA of 4.07. Another interesting fact about O'Donohue is that he was pretty good with the stick. Despite being a relief pitcher, he went... He had a lifetime 170 batting average with three home runs. And 170, I know, is not that great, but when you're a pitcher, that's not that bad. So, and he cracked three home runs as a pitcher as well, and that's, that's kind of unique for a guy that's a reliever to have those kind of stats as a pitcher. As I mentioned before, John O'Donohue Jr., which is named John Preston O'Donohue, also wound up pitching for the Baltimore Orioles in his career. I've thought about tracking him down. He, John Jr. did not make this set because it was after the set was made, but I was going through my cards the other day because since I got the Orioles set, I've been kind of pulling Orioles cards to the side just to throw in a box, and I happened to come across a John O'Donohue Jr. card. So I might try to figure out an address or two, you know, on him and see what other cards I might have of him and you know, send those in the mail so I can complete the father-son combo. So, very happy to add Mr. O'Donohue Sr. to the collection. I'm very happy to get Mr. Barry Moore on four as well. I'm very happy to get Laren Legro 
on these two single cards, but also these two rookie star 1971 tops. Again, like I mentioned, if anybody has had success with Gene Lamont, definitely you know say something down in the description below there. I hope you enjoyed this episode with some you know vintage returns from the 60s and 70s. I look forward to your comments below, and as always, happy collecting.